Hey there guys, I've been running the soil versus cocoa versus hydro test now for pretty much six months. They've been in these pots for about four months in these tents. So I have three four by twos here, soil, cocoa and hydro. These are chili plants now. They're uh, Tokyo Hot F1 chilies and uh, they're clones all from the same mother and yeah I've been growing them just to see what the difference in the different media can make to the rate of growth. And they've all got the same environment, same light setup and same genetics in the plants and been using the same canna range, uh, the soil uh, aqua, or sorry cocoa and aqua versions. So they've all been given pretty much the same chance to perform and grow and interesting to see what the growth is like. Let's have a quick look at just how they developed up to date. See here, soil nicely developed. Uh, not sure, well you'll see but there's lots and lots of fruit under here. Lots of uh, red chilies, some of them sat down in the soil and get a bit mouldy but anyway we have the cocoa side very similar in size the um, cocoa the cocoa as well good development lots of very big chilies in there not as many red ones actually interestingly but yeah big chilies not massive plants but big chilies and then we have the hydro side, the RDWC. It's a, an alien pro system, very big pots. As you can see, we've got big root development in there. System's off at the moment just to keep the noise down, but a healthy root development. One plant a lot larger than the other. The one on the left just took off a bit quicker earlier on with the rooting and that. Let's see here, it's pretty extensive. Not as much fruit, proportionately. Hard to see underneath here, but not as much fruit, not as many going red as with the soil. But uh, yeah, the size is massive. So, um, as you can see, significant difference with the RDWC. Obviously a lot more expensive to set up, a lot more involved um, in terms of maintenance and upkeep. But um, yeah, the increase in growth is pretty impressive over the others. So uh, yeah, I'm going to take these plants out now and weigh them up and measure them and uh, see what the numbers are like. Taking all the uh, plants out of the pots, we got the soil, cocoa and hydro here. And yeah, the soil and cocoa were quite similar in size, development, and you could see the, when I was taking them out, the root balls were right throughout the pots. Um, pots were probably a bit oversized for these plants, but the plants had plenty of room to grow if they wanted to get bigger. I think the, um, the uh, temperature reduction, uh, just generally into the winter, slowed them down so they didn't get hugely big. But there's lots of fruit, and that is an interesting early observation, is there's a lot more uh, ripened developed fruit in the soil side for some reason um, a lot more red fruit and a lot more developed than the cocoa or the hydro the hydro side has almost no red fruit so least developed fruit there um, but very obviously much 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 bigger um, in terms of plant size so let's take a closer, closer look you can see here with the soil side that the plants are pretty big and healthy and uh, as I said lots of lots of fruit there and lots of red fruit so well developed the cocoa then very similar in terms of plant size um, lots of fruit as well but not as much red fruit so not as mature as um, as the soil and then the cocoa which are just massive in comparison. Um, 
Just looking at the, the larger one here on its own. We'll have a look underneath. See a nice healthy root ball there. Um, and there is lots of fruit, there's quite a bit there. But uh, mostly green, only a tiny bit of fruit reddening. So yeah, much, much, much bigger. But as I said, not as much fruit. Or at least not as, uh, as a high proportion of fruit as with the, um, the cocoa and then the soil, which seems to have the best. Yeah, interesting differences between them. I'm going to just cut them up now, as in take the root balls off, separate the fruit, weigh the plants in total, and then separate the fruit out, and just see what the numbers come up. So, I'll do that now. I have chopped them all down and weighed the plants and also the fruit for each grow. And I have the results here. So the soil, the total weight of plant is 1.2 kilograms. The cocoa is 1.9 kilograms. And the hydro, your DWC, is 4.6 kilograms. So the um, the hydro is nearly four times the soil uh, and over twice the cocoa. So quite a dramatic result there. It's a bit different uh, from a fruit point of view. Uh, the soil is 529 grams. Cocoa is 923 grams. So again, nearly twice as much in line with the, uh, the overall plant size. And the Hydro is only 253 grams. Now I'm just going to have a closer look at these fruit just to, to look at the quality of them, not just the weight. First of all we got the soil side much more developed than the other ones. So uh, a lot more red fruit, nice large fruit and even the fruit that's still on the plant, the smaller stuff that I didn't pick is uh, is red mature so uh, yeah in comparison the cocoa one lots more fruit really good quality not as mature and red but uh, and still plenty coming along on the plant itself so it was still producing small little guys then the hydro Disappointing amount of fruit, very small uh, in terms of the mature fruit. Not sure if uh, that was a pollination thing or what it was. Um, in terms of, of the uh, small ones, there's still, there was still lots of fruit coming. Lots of flowers and lots of fruit coming in the, on the plant. I didn't pick at all. But uh, yeah, very impressive on the cocoa side for yield. More developed fruit on the soil grow and obviously the smallest on the cocoa. Um, so yeah, interesting mixed results. I'm going to give them a little taste test now. I'm going to start on the hydro side, or DWC. Not as many red ones here, so I'll have to pick a green one. I'm not going to try the seeds just yet. Just try the fruit. Hmm? Very firm. green taste, not much of a sweetness to them. No chili in the actual flesh itself, but nice. On the cocoa side then I'll try a red one. Whoa. Okay. Let's put that out. The flesh is really hot. Uh, it's got a fruity flavor to it. Not that sweet, but Jesus, that's hot. There it is there. I'm guessing I had some of the seeds with that one because it was a small little one. I thought I was just biting the end, but um, 
It's hot but not unpleasant. It's not a really sharp heat. It's kind of full bodied heat, so it's it's pretty nice. I'll try the um, soil now and uh, see what it's like. A regular one. I burnt this side with the cocoa, so I'm gonna try over here this time. Mmm. Definitely sweeter. A little bit more flavour. Not as hot this one, but I haven't gone up into the seeds, I think. Yeah. Soil easily wins it for flavour, I have to say. Um, yeah, very nice. I'm looking forward to... Um, I'm going to make a little sauce out of these guys. And, um, and keep it. And they should be really nice. Next, we're going to look at the cost and all the effort gone into each one and just see what the, uh, how the numbers add up. So I've calculated all the running costs and excluded the common cost to each of the tents. So there's uh, the cost of the tent, cost of the lighting, um, extractor fan, circulation fan, the inkbird controller, that kind of thing. They're all excluded because they're the same for each grow. What I have included is the pots. For the cocoa and the soil, fairly simple aero pots, uh, quite cheap. The medium in those pots, obviously soil and cocoa, pretty cheap too. The RWC system, um, I used quite a expensive system, the Alien Pro, but uh, you can get cheaper ones. Um, it does include a water pump and an air pump though, so it's going to be reasonably expensive. I put in 160 euros, uh, which is a fairly popular model I saw online of that size. Um, next thing in terms of the um, test equipment then to run them, uh, COCO and RDWC both require that the um, water uh, is, uh, in, in my circumstances here, that I needed to use a, a re reverse osmosis system to reduce down the particulates in the water before adding the nutrients. Also needed test lab equipment, um, so pH pen and a PPM um, measurement tool. Uh, they all cost money. Um, the uh, nutrients, <coughs> so the RDWC delivered nearly four times the soil, so we'd expect a lot more nutrient usage, and that was the case. Um, a bit over three times and also with the RDWC you got to empty it out and I reckon about a third of the nutrients I was actually chucking away every week or ten days when I replaced the nutrients and small bit of electricity on the RDWC from running the pumps it's only 50 watts an hour so not very much but just included in, the, in there anyway so RWC is much more expensive, um, particularly on your first run, because you've got to take a hit on all that equipment purchase. But given the yield increase, um, you know, it basically, if you haven't got more space, um, it's a great way of maximizing yield <clears throat> from a, a relatively smaller space. In terms of the overall comparison of the three systems, there is definitely higher level of difficulty with the hydro and that includes the cocoa grow of course because we're filtering the water in my case filtering the water with the reverse osmosis system we're making up batches of nutrients um, balancing them for ph um, and that all is uh, adds qu quite a bit of complexity whereas the soil one is just uh, basically adding nutrients and water to the soil, um, doing it by hand, very simple. No, um, no real measurement tools required at all. When it comes to the stealth of the system, the big note thing you notice with the RDWC is the noise of those air pumps and water pumps going. They're very loud, and um, it's moving quite a lot of material around, a lot of mass around the water, so it creates quite loud noises and quite loud vibrations, which are very hard to dampen and um, would be very, very hard to 
uh, sort of screen from um, or insulate from in, certainly within a, a house. Um, from a cost point of view, being through it, you know, there's varying levels of cost, but there's also varying levels of yield. And so really, if you want high performance, you've got to pay for it in this case, and it's going to cost a bit, but you're going to get the result in the end. So, you know, you're going to get a return for your investment. A really critical area for a lot of people is the time involved. A lot of people are hobbying and they just don't want to have to spend huge amounts of time and complexity. And that's where the soil comes in to its own. Really easy to do. Low amount of time if you want to. You can just, uh, you know, hand feed, hand water two or three times a week. Very, very straightforward, very simple. Far less likely to get issues with nutrients as well with the soil grow at uh, greater capacity um, to um, you know not react too strongly if you over or under um, over or under with the nutrients. Yeah, so uh, interesting choices out there. There's uh, hopefully a little bit of something for everybody. I know this is not a living soil test. So there'll be few people will take umbrage with the fact that I called it uh, soil versus cocoa versus hydro. But I think this is the way that most people do um, soil grow. So hopefully it's representative of uh, what you guys wanted to see. And um, yeah, I'm sure there will be plenty of uh, comments from people who are passionate about their own uh, choice. Look forward to them. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed. Take care.